Hello, dear future ECCs. This is Vishnu Vijay, a proud friend drama, and your lecturer for the advanced audit and assurance paper. So, folks, in this session, we will be discussing one of the latest technical articles available within the ECCs website in relation to the AAA paper. That is the exposure draft with proposed revisions to the code to promote the role and mindset expected of professional accountants. So. What exactly is this technical article all about? Or why exactly are we looking at this particular technical article anyway? Well, this is basically because the latest technical articles can be tested as a current issue question within your AAA exam, isn't it? So you have to always keep an eye out for those technical articles available within the website and read it through and highlight the key points and prepare notes of your own so that you can revise them on an ongoing basis till the day of your exam. Okay, folks. So let's debrief as to what this exposure draft is all about. Okay, folks. Now, when it comes to this particular exposure draft, what's the idea here? We are amending the code, isn't it? The ethical code that we all follow. So we're just amending that. And what all amendments are there? Well, that's basically as to what we'll be discussing. Why exactly are we making these amendments anyway? This is to promote the role and mindset expected that of a professional accountant. Okay, folks, that's basically why we're amending it. Okay, so what are the proposed amendments? Let's learn about that, shall we? So first of all, it highlights the wide ranging role of professional accountants in the society to act in public interest. So what's the idea here, guys? It basically specifies that the professional accountant should also have a duty to act in the public interest, isn't it? So we're just emphasizing that matter within this particular code, okay, because that's the uh, one of the proposed amendments. And what else? Changes to the definitions of fundamental principles of objectivity and professional behavior. So we all know the five fundamental principles, isn't it? So out of that, we have objectivity as well as professional behavior as well. So there's a slight change provided to the definitions of each of these. That's basically it. And what else? The addition of new application material in respect of the fundamental principle of integrity as well. What is an application material here? This is basically some uh, examples of uh, applying the particular concept into a scenario. That's basically it. Okay, because that's basically as to what an application material here basically means. We will look into that. And of course, a new one has been added to the principle, fundamental principle of integrity. That's basically the idea here. And what else? Requiring professional accountants to have an inquiring mind. Hmm, kind of sounds similar to professional skepticism, isn't it? So there is a few, uh, you know, changes made to the definition of a, a term known as an inquiring mind. Okay, folks, we will take a look at that as well. And what else? Emphasizing the importance of being aware of the dangers of bias as well. Okay, so bias, uh, our professional judgment being biased. Is that appropriate? No, not really, isn't it? We have to maintain objectivity. And what is objectivity? Having the ability to make unbiased professional judgment and decision, isn't it? That's basically the idea here. So what exactly are the dangers of bias? What kind of bias can occur within our career? That's basically as to what we have to learn in this particular area as well. Okay, folks, so these are basically the key proposals provided by this particular exposure draft. And of course, there is also an additional point in relation to emphasizing the importance of uh, internal culture of an organization as well. Okay, folks. Now, uh, let's take a look at each of these aspects one by one, shall we? First of all, let's take a look at the roles and responsibilities of professional accountants. Now, what you have to understand here is that the proposed revision to the code explained that Compliance with the code enables accountants to meet their responsibilities to act in public interest. So there were a ch few changes made to the roles and responsibilities of professional accountants. And why exactly have we made this change? This is so that the professional accountants can act more in, in, with regards to the public interest, isn't it? So that's basically the idea here. What else? The revision also highlights the fact that professional accountants are involved in a wide range of roles and acknowledge that organizations involve professional accountants in these activities because they recognize the skills and values that they bring to the activities they undertake. So what's the idea here, guys? Well, basically, it states that the professionals who comply with the code 
does have the ability to add value to the activities that they undertake within the organization. Okay, folks, that's basically a key principle that has been stated here. That's, uh, that's basically the idea behind the revisions to the roles and responsibilities of a professional accountant. And the ultimate objective here is to highlight the aspect or highlight the responsibility of a professional accountant that they have towards the society and to act in public interest. Okay, folks, so that's basically the idea here. And what else? So there were some revisions to the definitions for the terms objectivity and professional behavior, isn't it? So what exactly are these revisions? Let's talk about that, shall we? First of all, what is the change to the definition of objectivity? Well, basically, what is objectivity? Objectivity is all about making professional judgment or business judgment without being biased or without being influenced by any other factors, isn't it? That's basically it. However, what we've done here is, in this particular exposure draft, there is a revision that has been proposed. Instead of viewing this particular definition with a negative wording, we're going to change it to some positive wording. That's basically it, okay, folks? A simple change of words. That's basically uh, all the amendment that there is to the definition. The meaning is still the same. It's just the wordings that has changed, okay, folks? So let's talk about it. The proposed new definition moves away from defining objectivity negatively in terms of not compromising professional or business judgment to a more positive emphasis on actual exercise of professional and or business judgment without being compromised by any factors such as bias, conflict of interest, or any form of undue influence or undue reliance on other parties. What's the idea here, guys? Well, earlier it was stated that we must not compromise. Okay, folks, we must not compromise our professional judgment and business judgments, etc. Isn't it? Now we're just changing the wording a little bit to make it look a bit more positive than negative. That's basically it. Okay, folks, we've changed the wording to the actual exercise of professional or business judgment without being compromised by the following factors such as bias, conflict of interest, etc. As simple as that. Okay, folks, this is a simple change that has happened here. Moving on to the next aspect, that is, there's something that has been added to the particular definition as well. What has been added? The revised description of objectivity highlights the risk of technology impairing a professional accountant's objectivity as well. Okay, so we know that there are some business developments or improvements in the technological aspects within the business industries, isn't it? So due to these technological advancements, there are a lot of softwares that we use for decision-making purposes, softwares to gather information, etc., isn't it? So if you think about it, some of our professional judgment is actually influenced by all of the information obtained through these systems and softwares, isn't it? So isn't there a possibility that a professional accountant might blindly rely upon the software to make its own decisions? Yes, there is, isn't it? So that is basically something that has been incorporated within the code as well. Okay, folks, professional judgments and business judgment should not be blindly, you know, based on the particular uh, data obtained from these kinds of systems or various other technological factors. That's basically the idea here. Okay, folks, it's basically, you know, we call it automation bias, okay, which is just basically caused due to over-reliance on these machineries as well as technologies. That's basically the idea here. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. We will, of course, talk more on that a bit shortly as well moving on to the next aspect that is the exposure draft now this particular paragraph is in relation to the revision for the term professional behavior so what has happened let's take a look the exposure draft also proposes to strengthen the fundamental principle of professional behavior by including a requirement that professional accountants must behave in a manner that is consistent with the profession's responsibility to act in public interest rather than just being focused internally on the profession itself. So what's the idea here guys? We're just emphasizing the fact that a professional accountant must also act in public interest as well, isn't it? So as part of their professional behavior, they must act in uh, for the society in public's interest. Okay, folks, that's basically the idea here. Simple as that, isn't it? So these are basically some of the changes that has occurred in the definition of professional behavior and objectivity, as simple as that. So quite a few minor changes, that's basically it. Now moving on to another aspect that is integrity. Okay, so what is the proposed amendment for integrity? We learned that there is a new application material there, isn't it? So let's talk about it, shall we? The new application material states that integrity includes having the determination 
to act appropriately when confronted with dilemmas or difficult situations, providing the following examples of what this might involve. Okay, so what's the idea here, guys? So we just have to maintain our in integrity, even if we are faced with a difficult situation. That's basically the idea emphasized within this particular revision, as simple as that. Now, what exactly are we, are, are we talking about here? Well, the particular standard provides us with some instances as well. Okay, books, let's take a look at these situations, shall we? First of all, standing one's ground when facing pressure to do otherwise during the course of performing professional activities. Okay, so you have to stand your own ground when the situation demands it. That's one aspect to it. What else? Challenging others when appropriate, even, uh, even when doing so creates potential adverse personal or organizational consequences. So what's the idea here, guys? Even if you are faced with some sort of personal or organizational consequence, you will have to challenge the individual if the situation demands so. Okay, folks, so that's basically what has been stated here. So it's all about standing your own ground and challenging others wherever appropriate, even if it has its own consequences. So this is what is expected of a professional accountant from now on, as simple as that. Okay, folks, that's yet again another revision that has been brought about in integrity. What else? The exposure drafts inclusion of the concept of determination to act appropriately in difficult situation and its position within the principle of integrity emphasizes that emphasizes the need to do the right thing regardless of the challenges faced by professional accountants. So what's the idea here? Basically, this particular amendment was in place just to make sure that professional accountant does the right thing even if they are faced with difficult situation. As simple as that, okay folks? So quite a simple set of changes, that's basically all it is. Now, moving on to the next aspect, which is having an inquiring mind. Now, as I stated earlier, this is like a new term that has been introduced here, isn't it? So what exactly is having an inquiring mind? Kind of, kind of sounds similar to professional skepticism, isn't it? So let's take a look at as to what this exactly means, shall we? The IESBA has therefore proposed to include new application material, which defines having an inquiring mind as the following. Okay, so what is having an inquiring mind? Let's take a look. Being open and alert for situations and information that might require further investigation. Okay, or the lack of thereof that might require further investigation. So what's the idea here, guys? It's kind of similar to professional skepticism as well, isn't it? It's all about being open and alert to uh, situations and information which requires further investigation. If there is such a situation that has occurred during your professional career, then you will have to be alert regarding it and act against it accordingly. Okay, folks, so that's basically the idea here. And what else? Uh, so it's about being open and alert. And what else? Considering whether there is a need to critically evaluate the information obtained, where the need for an extent or nature of any investigation, including critical evaluation, will depend on the nature, scope, and output of the professional activity being undertaken. So, we are basically providing this particular definition on the basis of all the fields and accounting. Okay, folks, we're not talking about auditing or accounting alone. We're also talking about various other professions as well. Okay, folks, in any, any and every profession, be it the tax, be it the finance profession, etc. Uh, what we have to do is we have to be alert for uh, instances uh, which requires further investigation. And of course, we have to conduct critical evaluation of the information that we have obtained as well. Okay, folks, that's basically it. These two qualities should be there in the uh, skill set of a professional accountant. That is basically what has been stated here. So that's basically as to what it, having an inquiring mind is all about. Okay, folks, two things being open and alert for uh, situations that require further investigation and what else? Critical evaluation of the information obtained. That's basically it. Okay, folks, go keep this in mind. What else? And then there is bias. Okay, folks, so when we talk about bias, we actually learn about a lot of types of bias as well. Okay, folks, so let's take a look. The exposure draft therefore proposes to emphasize awareness of any professional accountant's individual bias in order to help reduce the risk, reduce its risk and impact, particularly on exercise of professional judgment and therefore to contribute towards effective application of the conceptual framework. So what's the idea here? Well, basically, the particular quote realizes that professional accountants would be, you know, 
uh, vulnerable to bias, isn't it? So especially when they're exercising professional judgment, there is always a possibility that they might be a bit vulnerable to bias. So in order to address the situation, we are, you know, we're spreading the awareness of this. That's basically all we are doing within the new code or revised code. Okay, folks. So what exactly have we done? In order to, you know, do this, what we have done is we've provided a list of biases in that particular uh, exposure draft. That's basically it. So what all biases have we provided? Let's take a look at that, shall we? So first of all, we've provided a definition for anchoring bias. Now, what is anchoring bias? Let's take a look. Anchoring bias is basically a tendency to use an initial piece of information as an anchor against which subsequent information is adequately assessed. So what's the idea here, guys? Now, I want you to think about this situation, okay, books? If you're making a professional judgment or be it any decision, you make that particular decision or judgment based on some information, isn't it? So, as a professional accountant, you have to make your professional judgment using a lot of information that is made available to you. However, let's consider the situation of anchoring bias here, okay, folks? What this basically means is that you initially do something to obtain some information and you yeah you get that particular piece of information in your hand okay folks then what you would do is you would try to compare all the other information with the initial piece of information that you've received is that appropriate no not really why is that because this is basically because if you think about it what if the initial piece of information that you obtained is wrong then effectively, your ultimate judgment will also be wrong if you are anchoring all the other information to the initial piece, isn't it? So that's basically it. Okay, books. Let me just illustrate that in another example. Let's say that you are conducting an audit for a particular organization and you've obtained some evidences. And when we talk about evidences, we obtain a lot of evidence, isn't it? To be more specific, we obtain sufficient and appropriate evidence, isn't it? So let's say that you've conducted quite a few procedures and after conducting the first procedure, you have obtained a particular evidence. So now you're judging the all the other evidences that you've obtained with the initial piece of evidence. We're just assuming that the initial piece of evidence is correct and all the others are a bit skeptical. Okay, because that's what we're considering here. Is that the right approach? I don't think so, isn't it? So this is what anchoring bias is all about. Okay, folks, we depend upon one initial piece of uh, information and compare this particular thing with all the others to make sure as to whether the other information or subsequent information that we gather is right or wrong. This is the wrong approach okay, folks, that has been provided over here. So this is known as anchoring bias. It's a quite, kind of a simple thing if you think about it, isn't it? Now, moving on to the next aspect that is automation bias. So what is automation bias all about? Let's read about it. A tendency to favor output generated from automated systems, even when human reasoning or contradictory information raises questions as to whether such output is reliable or fit for purpose. So what's the idea here? Well, basically this bias arises when a professional overly, be overly become reliant on a particular system or software. Okay, folks, so that's basically it. So when they over depend on a particular information generated from a software or a particular system, then we call it automation bias. Okay, folks. So the idea here is this, what if the particular information generated by the system is incorrect? Then basically we're just blindly relying on it, isn't it? And of course, if, if human reasoning or any other factors contradict this information, the professionals still depend upon the information generated by the automation system itself. Is that appropriate? No, not really. This is what the automation bias is all about. Okay, folks, you cannot overly re re be reliant on any of the systems or control. Uh, 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 so what is automation bias all about? Let's read about it, shall we? A tendency to favor output generated from automated systems, even when human reasoning or contradictory information raises questions as to whether such output is reliable or fit for purpose. So, what's the idea here, guys? This is when a professional blindly relies upon a particular uh, automated system, isn't it? That's basically it. We're just assuming that the system generates correct information and all other information that we've obtained may not be that reliable. Okay, folks, is that the right approach? No, not really, isn't it? So, why exactly is that? Due to the automation bias that we have. Okay, folks, 
we are ba basing our professional judgment based on this particular automated system blindly we're not uh, you know considering human reasoning here we're not taking a look at all the contradictory information that we obtained through various other sources we're just blindly relying on the automated system that's basically what automation bias is all about now moving on that's not the end of the biases there isn't it we have a full list of that let's take a look at availability bias now so what is availability bias all about a tendency to place more weight on events or experiences that immediately come to mind or are readily available than those that are not so what's the idea here guys this is basically basing our judgment or decision on the immediately available information than you know the information that would take a bit more time that's basically the idea here okay folks so is that right approach no not really okay folks so it of course depends upon the situation but in most cases it is not the right approach we have to consider all the information isn't it we can't only rely upon the information that is immediately available isn't it so that's basically the idea here and then yet again we have confirmation bias as well so what's the idea here a tendency to place more weight on information that corroborates an existing belief than information that contradicts or casts doubt on that belief. Okay, so what's the idea here now? So the idea here is basically this. We may already have an expectation of what's going to happen or what, what the particular consequence or what the uh, decision should be, isn't it? So due to this belief that we have, we're blindly relying on the information which complements that particular belief that's basically it okay that's basically as to what confirmation bias is we're so desperate to get our expectations right that we blindly believe on the information that yeah, that complements that particular expectation and we ignores all the other information which contradicts it that's basically the idea behind confirmation bias as simple as that and what else we have group think so what is group think a tendency to think or make decision as a group that discourages creativity or individual responsibility. Of course, group decisions or group discussions has its own advantages. But one of the disadvantages of doing this is that individual creativity is lost, isn't it? So one particular individual, had he had taken a particular decision alone, he may have thought about a more creative approach rather than a group discussion, isn't it? So that's basically it. Okay, folks, it's basically one of the disadvantages of uh, having group discussion. However, this has also been highlighted here. Okay, folks, a particular individual or a particular team should not always take all and each and every decision as a group, isn't it? There might be situations where an individual level of creativity is involved as well. Okay, folks, so uh, that's basically something that should be encouraged as well. That's basically as what this point is all about and what else? We have yet again another uh, bias that is known as overconfidence bias. Well, this is kind of obvious, isn't it? What is the idea here? It's a tendency to overestimate one's own ability to make accurate assessment of risk and other judgments or decisions. So what's the idea here, guys? When you're too overconfident on your own, own beliefs and own information or own judgments, then what would happen? There is always a possibility that it can go wrong, isn't it? So the individual may not consider this. So what they do is they would blindly make a decision, you know, from being overconfident. That's basically the idea here. And what else? Then there is representation bias as well. So what is representation bias all about? A tendency to base an understanding on a pattern of experiences, events, or beliefs that is considered to be representative. So basically, we're just, you know, concluding everything blindly based on the past experiences and uh, other patterns that we've identified and seen. Okay, folks, so that's basically the idea behind representation bias, as simple as that. And oh, what else? We also have selective perception as well. So what's the idea here? A tendency for a person's expectation to influence how the person views a particular matter or person. Well, this is basically when we rely upon our expectation of a person's view rather than, you know, uh, understanding as to what exactly the other person means. That's basically the idea behind selective perception. Okay, folks, we believe on our own expectation rather than what the particular individual actually means. That's basically the idea behind selective perception. So these are just a list of biases that has been provided within the exposure draft and what else? 
And one of the final things that you have to understand here is regarding the importance of organizational culture. Okay, folks, so the exposure draft has emphasized the aspects in relation to the importance of being aware of the bias related issues, as well as the importance of having a good organizational culture or a positive organizational culture as well. So what exactly has the exposure draft stated regarding this area? Let's take a look at that, shall we? The exposure draft therefore proposes to emphasize the importance of a positive internal organizational culture to the effective application of the conceptual framework by introducing new application material within the code itself. Okay, so we have an application material with relation to this. Let's, let's take a look at as to what it is, shall we? In particular, it explains the ethical culture is most effective when the following things happen. Let's take a look at each of them, shall we? Leaders and those in managerial roles hold themselves and others accountable for demonstrating ethical values of the organization. Okay, so the key executives of the organization or the leaders of the organization must, uh, you know, be accountable for having an ethical culture within the organization. That's one aspect that has been pointed out. And what else? Appropriate education and training programs, management processes, and performance evaluation criteria that promote the ethical culture are in place. So, uh, of course, for each and every individual within an organization, we may conduct performance evaluation and provide them with the feedback of their performance as well, isn't it? And of course, there would be a lot of training programs in a lot of organization, education programs, etc. So all these activities should include an aspect of culture to it. Okay, because that's basically what is it, what has been stated here. And finally, Ethical values are adhered to in dealings with third parties as well. Okay, folks, conduct fair trade practices. Okay, folks, do the right thing and do not get involved in unethical practices. That's basically another idea. Okay, folks, by adopting these means, we should be able to introduce an ethical culture within each and every organization. These are the things that has been stated within the exposure draft. Uh, which relates to the revision to the code of conduct. Okay, folks, remember that. So. Quite an interesting technical article, isn't it? And that's all for the exposure draft proposed changes. So let's take a look at each revisions one by one yet again, shall we? So what all things have we learned? We looked at the wide ranging role of professional accountants in society to act in public interest. And of course, there was some changes to the definitions of objectivity and professional behavior. There was a new addition of application material to the fundamental principle of integrity. And then we learned about uh, professional accountants should have an inquiring mind as to what inquiring mind actually means. And finally, emphasizing the importance of being aware of the dangers of bias and having a positive organizational culture within the organization as well, isn't it? So these are all the key points that you have to understand regard with regards to the technical article. Okay, folks, so remember that. So that's all what I wanted to cover in this particular session. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them out in the comment section. Okay, folks. So that's all for this particular session. I will see you later in more informative videos. This is Vishnu Vijay signing off for now. Thank you.